guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Cecil County Dragway. So we've made it to the track. Uh, this is probably, if I had to guess, this is gonna be our last chance to really run the truck. We're gonna actually hit the quarter mile with the truck. Uh, we're gonna run it. I just made some changes in the anteater for the transmission tuning. Uh, we're gonna basically run it the same way we did in Florida. Uh, spool jet and uh, tune one and see how it does. They're currently prepping the track. because we are here for a radial tire test session. So this is optimum conditions for the truck. It's feeling great out. So hopefully you can hear me over them prepping the track, but we're here for a radial tire prep session. So there is a lot of cars here. I think everybody kind of had the same idea I did, um, but it's all race cars. So no street uh, drag radials, just regular uh, radials, you know, not something you drive on the street. So the truck is warmed up, ready to go, we're waiting waiting on nitrous bottles. We gotta get our nitrous bottles filled. They're still empty. I haven't had a chance to fill them since we were in Florida. But other than that, we are ready to go. Uh, made the transmission tuning changes. She's warmed up. All the fluids are good. I'm definitely excited and nervous. I know you guys probably can't hear me right now, but oh well, they're prepping. I should probably just wait until they're done, but then the cars are gonna start running again. But anyway. I'm definitely nervous. Uh, got the chute ready to go, everything like that. We're just going to try and go A to B, not worried about turning it up, get some data, figure out our shift points, make sure everything's good there. So, all right, let's get this. Uh, I got to get our nitrous bottles and then we will get up there, get teched in, and then we will run the truck for the first time on the quarter mile since, well, it became that. Alright, so our first pass didn't fare too uh, too good. I don't know what happened. I don't know if we spun or what. Um, one five sixty foot, six nine eighth mile. Uh, the only thing that we improved upon is our quarter mile time, or not quarter mile time, our mile per hour. One forty two is the fastest I've gone in a quarter. So I don't know if this thing spun, um, but our exhaust modification to make the the stack. Uh, stay straight up and down did not work as you can see it is now at a full 90 degrees blowing into the fireplace so also this chain is loose it was tight when we went up there so I don't know what's going on I think I'm just gonna sink the front end double check our tire pressures again see if I what I can figure out with this exhaust stack but yeah uh, I don't know if it was spinning or what it was doing but it was not happy got our exhaust pipe off and uh, found the problem we sheared that roll pin right off. I mean, just, it's flush with the uh, flange now. So I don't know, I gotta figure out some kind of a solution. The solution going forward would be to put a bracket on the exhaust manifold, but I gotta figure out something so we can continue to test uh, and see what exactly happened. Uh, <sighs>
Well, we are back. Um, so, extraordinarily um, frustrating day. Um, the truck wanted to try and kill me on the first pass. I don't have any outside video. Um, I didn't have anybody to run the camera today. So, it was just in the cab, which there wasn't much to see anyway. But, um, yeah, so first time it kind of wanted to go toward the wall. I just kind of drove it. And it didn't feel right um, in the moment. I was kind of thinking because it was all over the place. It was spinning, but something just didn't quite feel right. Um, thinking back and reviewing the video, like, I'm not sure. Um, like I said, it, I thought it was because I was spinning or it was all over the place. I, I just was trying to focus on that. And in the moment, uh, the truck ran a 10.6 at 142. Our exhaust pipe decided to, well, exit stage right it wanted to, is what it wanted to do um so we got to fix that and when we went back up and i'll show you after we get the truck off the trailer but ratchet strapped to the rescue so we went up to the do our second pass and launched the truck and i reviewed the gopro footage already as soon as i hit the shifter up to you know for second gear all oh, it just boom like it made a noise it a clunk it, it was just it sounded bad i mean i pulled right over because you know everybody's there to race and i thought for sure something you know catastrophic completely catastrophic happened which i still probably did but no fluids on the ground i was thinking you know we got those big drive shafts so i wasn't really thinking of a drive shaft i was thinking maybe rear or you know whatever tried to you know once i got the truck stopped put it back in you know first wouldn't go anywhere put it in reverse nothing took it out of four-wheel drive tried the same thing nothing 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 they pulled me off the track and uh we got loaded up which i definitely uh we need to need to wire that winch up uh we need that um but one of the guys at the track max uh, thanks a lot i appreciate it he is actually like the announcer or whatever uh he helped us out with his jeep and we just kind of drug this thing on the trailer that's why i brought the factory wheels i was smart enough to do that um but yeah just a disappointing day nothing really to show for it um our efi live our flash scan uh didn't want to record a data log so i have no data from either pass um i would hit the i hit the thing on the first one got to you know when i got to the end of track on a return road i saw it was already back to the main menu that's not right so I went up the second pass, I made sure it tried to start, it immediately saved. So I don't know if it's trying to save the device and not the memory card and there's no more room on it. I don't know. But whatever we got going on is bad. I think it is definitely a hard part uh, failure. If I had to guess, my guess just with what I've seen so far, which is just trying to drive the truck, uh, I'm going to say intermediate shaft is my um guess which it does have a built intermediate shaft um yeah I'm, I'm not sure at this point I, if it's a transfer case that would be freaking amazing but i don't think we're going to get that lucky so we really have zero to show for today other than a broken truck well it's not true i made my fastest pass ever uh, mile an hour wise 142 i think it was that's the fastest i've ever been fastest this truck's ever been mile an hour wise um but it really like I said, that first pass felt weird. I probably should have just stopped and gone back to the pits. And but I stayed in it, and uh, it didn't. It wasn't until like the end of the track when it felt right. So I don't know what that's all about. But oh well, we'll get it off the trailer, get it in here, and figure out what I want to do. I'm very distraught with today's events or progress or whatever. But beautiful day though. Beautiful track prep. Um, the prep was wow on point so and our 60 foots they weren't very good but we didn't do a burnout to clean off the tires before it met anyway let's get the truck off the trail All right, got the uh, trailer sitting here off the truck. Race truck's in the garage. I got the trailer sitting here because that winch is definitely in the uh, priority column. We need to get that hooked up so this isn't such a th you know pain in the ass and have to ask for help and all that. We need to be self-sufficient. Um, also, I popped the front clip so you guys could see what I did for the exhaust. So, as you can see, ratchet strap across the engine, round the uh, hydro boost, down 
to the control arm bracket and then I actually zip tied the hook on that so if something happened it came loose whatever we wouldn't lose it and it wouldn't and I'm not, not that I'm worried about losing it in the ratchet strap so that way it doesn't get thrown on the track or something like that so yeah janky but it, it worked for well it worked for 60 feet um, but that's done getting the truck in here was more of a chore than it was when we got back from Florida um, from Florida if you guys remember just our direct clutches were burn up well I definitely know it's a hard part failure now because the truck would not move in reverse um, you know I had it in neutral and it still would not go backwards I pushed and all that kind of stuff and uh, yeah pop the transfer case into neutral and off she she wanted to go uh, a little bit more of a pain doing it that way because I couldn't you know get it to I couldn't get it over the dovetail on the trailer and to let gravity do its work because I had to be in there on the brake pedal because there's no park um, so that definitely makes me think that intermediate shaft also um, what was it uh, Oh, so what I did was I got it pretty well good to go in the garage. I, you know, put something uh, between the seat and the brake pedal, so it was good. Made everything, you know, nicey nice, and then got in the truck, pushed the brake pedal myself, let go, and here we are. So, um, even though I'm quite dejected and I really don't feel like doing it, it is not even six o'clock yet. It is five forty-eight. I don't know if you guys can't see it. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to try and do some kind of time thing where I did before. See how long it takes me to get it out. I'm going to get the transmission out. I want to look at it. Um, just hits keep on coming. Oh, I pulled the drain plug. I don't know if you guys can see the fluid on my hand. The fluid's not burnt at all. But if you guys can see that, we uh, definitely have... Yeah, you guys can you know, be able to see it. Put it back here. See, I don't know if you guys can see it now, sitting on that dipstick tube. Uh, definitely a chunk of something. So, hard part failure. So the trans is out, transfer case is out, off. Um, I looked, I think we started at like 5.58 or something like that. Got it off at 5.48, I think it was-ish. It was about 50 minutes, if my time is correct. Not, and I wasn't even rushing, um, just with like our new cross member, wherever the heck that's at. New cross member, also being able to, big time saver was being able to get to the converter bolts um, from the outside of the truck. Those 12 converter bolts came right out with the gun. I mean, not right out. Had to, you know, had to let it impact a little bit. Um, but none of them were loose, which is good. Um, or, uh, what was I saying here? So, the other thing is, I had a problem before where uh, getting the front drive shaft off was a real pain. Uh, how I solved that is I actually chased the threads on both the transfer case and the bolts. Just to make sure they were clean so that way I could run them in and I could run them out after the you know initial torque was broken and made things much easier. Now our current dilemma. The um, the torque converter does not seem to want to come off. Um, which is very, very not bueno. Um, 
gonna look at it maybe i'll tilt it up pull the pan see what i can see but yeah um with the torque converter on there it's a little too heavy for me to lift off the jack so uh that's what i'll do i'll tilt it up pull the pan we'll take a look and go from there All right, so I got the torque converter off, had to pry it. I put a couple bolts in it and with some washers, pried it out and proceeded to take the transmission apart. So I had the pan off before, found all the metal. I pulled it back off because I was thinking about pulling the valve body, but I was able to actually get the second gear band out um, from, all right. Well, first I pulled the pump, then I got the second gear band out um, and then pulled the input shift and the direct drum. I want to preface all this by saying, don't do this if you have a transmission, even if you installed it yourself and it's like a warrant, you know, if you have it and it was built by somebody else and you have a warranty, don't rip it apart because there goes your warranty, absolutely 100%. Um, but with our findings, at the, with what happened at the track and then when I got home here and couldn't push it off the trailer because it was kind of locked up, had to put transfer case in neutral. Um, I kind of had a good idea. Also, our torque converter not coming off, uh, finding that shaft kind of wonky. Uh, yeah, I, I pretty much knew it was a hard part failure, which I don't care who builds your transmission. A hard part failure is not warranted because uh, obviously you're doing something to, something either wrong you are doing or you're just doing shit like we're doing. So anyway, um, I had to pull it apart. I had to see, that's why I pulled it tonight. I just wanted to know. But all our metal chunks is another indication, obviously, but here's the rest of the metal chunks. So um, our intermediate shaft, like I had said, uh, it went kablam, kablooey. Um, so this gear on the sun shell, the sun shell is junk. I believe this bearing is junk, probably, because it's got junk in it. Uh, the planetary has stayed in the direct drum, and all of the planetaries are destroyed in there. Our uh, billet intermediate shaft was not happy. So, whoa, all over the place with the camera. So, trying to pull the input, or trying to pull the torque converter off, I attribute to it wasn't that the shaft was bent. The problem was all that metal, all this metal that was in here and the shaft kind of being snapped how it is, if you guys can see there, just that all being the way it is, made the shaft stick through the pump at a little bit of an angle, just made stuff hard to get off, um, but we got it off. So our intermediate shaft failed. Now today, the track prep was so I don't know if that had something to do with it. Another thing is, if you guys remember our direct drum before, um, with the pressure bleeding off with that seal, was that kind of giving us a dampening effect to it? So maybe this intermediate shaft was hurt a little before. I know John checked everything over with a fine tooth comb, but you know, there's always, you know, there could have been like a crack inside one of the oiling ports or whatever. This intermediate shaft is actually an intermediate shaft that was in this transmission when this transmission was in my old fourth gen Dodge uh, Caitlin. So this trans or this intermediate shaft I've had for since before the YouTube stuff. So five or six years it's been through multiple input shaft failures. It's been in two different trucks. We've had this thing for a while. Um, when we are building the trans, first when I went to John to have him build the trans, I believe a new intermediate shaft had come out, both billet, but a different billet intermediate shaft had come out in the meantime, and it was kind of a toss up. Do we change it out? Do we not? What are the chances of failure? You know, kind of one of those things we weighed and we kept it. Was that a bad decision? Possibly, you know, is there something else going on? I don't know. I'm not a transmission expert. That's why we have the guys at Muldoon's. But 
as you guys can see, we have quite a bit of uh, just yeah, it looks like trash in there. I mean, absolute garbage. Today was just not a good day. I mean, your transmission's not supposed to have whatever that is. Um, I'm gonna leave all this metal and stuff in here for John to see, just so when he looks at it, he can maybe give us a little better idea, which maybe, like I said, maybe this thing's just wore out and maybe we're putting out way too much steam uh, for it, but it, like I said, we've had this intermediate shaft for however long, and now it just decided to give up the ghost. Unfortunately, we weren't making any, we didn't have an opportunity to make any good passes today, which sucks, and what also sucks is it's November, it's beginning of November. By the time, you know, converter's gonna have to go out, it could have a chunk of intermediate in it, we don't know. By the time we get everything back, more than likely, track's gonna be closed. So it's looking like 2020 for the race truck is a bust. We got it working. We just gotta get the kinks out a little bit. Um, so kinda, I guess it works perfectly for 2020. What happened today, it just, that's the way this year's going. Um, I'm sure they're gonna still be counting stuff by the time we got our transmission back, but that doesn't mean the track will be open. Um, so anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed because honestly, I didn't enjoy today too much. Kind of sucked, but it is what it is. This is the game we're playing. We're playing find a weak link and maybe the direct drum kind of bleeding off when we were in Florida is the reason this thing didn't break down there. Thankfully, um, we were only a half hour away in rising sun, Maryland today. So it wasn't that big a deal, but we will figure it out. We will try and make this thing better and get back to work or get back to trying to make the race truck great again uh, or great. It hasn't been great since it's been together because yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say to be honest with you guys. I'm kind of dejected a little over the whole situation um, and it's not Muldoon's fault. It's well, maybe we can blame Freedom Racing Engines and Hardway Performance for just making this thing such an animal. <laughs> um, we're definitely putting some power out. People were looking at the truck, asking about it. And when you told them that it was all fiberglass other than the cab and it still weighs 5,000 pounds, guys in cars were very confused. You know, we probably have 2,000 pounds worth of drivetrain. Um, Sorry guys, I'm just rambling on, but anyway, we broke our transmission once again, but it was a hard part failure. There's nothing we could do. Maybe the thing was fatigued and you couldn't see it. I don't know, but we're gonna make it better and we're gonna get back after it. Might not be this year, maybe next year, but we'll get to it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Get out in your garage, get the wrench on your truck.